In today's video, we're talking about how to harvest, and we're going to provide a lot of different tips and tricks and things for you to think about, so that way after you put in all the effort of preparing your garden beds, planting your seeds, pruning, trellising, weeding, whatever you've had to do for those crops, that you are really ready to, to enjoy all of that flavor when it comes to harvesting. So there's a few things to keep in mind that are just kind of general principles when you're going to harvest. Ideally, you want to be harvesting earlier in the morning or when it's cooler out, um, because a lot of times our crops, as they go throughout the day, they're going to get hot, maybe even a little bit wilty as the day goes on. Um, and so they're going to be at their peak flavor, kind of their peak ripeness, first thing in the morning before it's gotten too hot and they've kind of been you know, exposed to the stresses of the day. And so generally we'll try and harvest out in the morning, particularly if it's cooler out, um, that is a really good time for you to harvest. Uh, you also want to really know when things are ready. So typically we'll actually do a walkthrough once a week. And that really gives us a chance just to evaluate where all the plants are. You don't necessarily have to be out doing that every single day, but if you go out once a week, you can see, okay, these peas are probably a day or two off. You know, this carrot is probably another week off, so we'll check it again next week when you come back. Oh, the spinach is ready to harvest. Maybe we can make a great spinach salad tonight. So it's really helpful as, as we start thinking about meal planning and incorporating these veggies into our diet to really have a sense of what's going to be coming up that week. That, you, that way you can pull out you know, meat from the freezer to go with it or grab other ingredients at the store that you might need to really accompany the, the veggies so that they can really shine in their peak ripeness. So we'll give you a few general tips as we're talking about how to harvest, how to know when things are ready to harvest, and we'll demonstrate on a few of our crops here in, in this garden space. So first of all, for root crops, a way to know that they are ready to harvest is when the shoulders of the crop start showing. So I'll give you an example of that. So here with this carrot bed next to me, these are probably a week or two off. So you see all these great luscious greens. Some of them are even quite, quite big here. But when you look down closer to the earth, you really don't see any of the carrots themselves yet. So you can even kind of brush away a little bit of dirt to see and they're still pretty thin. They're not quite ready to harvest yet. Again, these are probably uh, one to two weeks out from being ready to harvest. But we have our turnips over here, another root crop. And you can see that the shoulder of the turnip is popping up out of the ground. And the same will be true of your radishes and your beets. So when it's ready, you simply grab onto the tops. You kind of wiggle it out a little bit. You don't want to pull too hard because the greens might actually kind of come apart from the crop, where you just pull it out and it's ready to go right here. And depending on how many we're harvesting at a time, we'll actually just bring a little harvest tote out with us. That way we can put all of the veggies in here at once. And we're not just taking, you know, five or six in our hands, taking it to the house, coming back out to harvest more. It's just a little more efficient use of our time to just kind of stack everything here in the crate as we go. Now, when we're knowing uh, about our greens and when they're ready to harvest, it depends a little bit on how you want to use your greens. So there are some cases, for instance, like a, a head of lettuce, a head of romaine lettuce. You may want to just harvest the entire head of lettuce all at once. So you wait until it's a good size, the size that you would like to eat it at, and you just simply slice there near the root right at the ground level. But there are some crops that we call our cut and come again crops. And so those are things like spinach and kale and chard, where you can cut some of those outer leaves and the entire plant will just continue to regrow. So here with our spinach, I'll show you what that looks like. So we'll take our harvest knife and it's really good to have a dedicated knife if you can for your harvesting. That way you can always keep it clean, keep it nice and sharp. We use our Opinel knives. They are amazing knives, some of the best knives we've ever used for harvesting. Highly recommend them. And so with the spinach, I would simply come up to the plant and I would slice off just some of these larger outer leaves. So then my, my plant can kind of get more sunshine to these inner leaves here that are just starting to grow. And when we come back in a couple weeks, you know, two weeks or so, probably we'll be ready to harvest off of this same plant again. These are just the root crops and our greens. A lot of our other vegetables, what we typically call kind of your fruiting vegetables, so your tomatoes, your peppers, eggplants. Again, it's important to know what to expect. So that's where it's important to look at your seed packet to see what size you should anticipate, what color. So for instance, we grow tomatoes probably four or five different colors. And so it's important to know whether we're looking for a yellow tomato, a pink tomato, a red tomato, to know when that will be ready to harvest. 
As a general rule though, you'll want to make sure you're, again, doing that weekly walkthrough to know how frequently you're going to be coming in to harvest some of those crops. But some of those crops, if you just check it and harvest it once a week, it should be just fine. But there are some crops that once they get started, they are ready to just take off and you'll want to come check on them several times throughout the week. So zucchini is a great example of that. Ideally, you'll want to eat zucchini or summer squashes when they're about six to eight inches. That's when they'll be the most tender. But if you wait an entire week before you go check on that zucchini plant again, you're going to have some baseball size, you know, baseball bat size zucchinis, which you can still shred and use in zucchini bread and things. But if you want to actually eat the plant when it's the most tender, the most flavorful, you'll want to eat it when it's a little bit smaller. Same goes with some of your peas and your beans. If you get it when it's that nice, tender, almost like a pencil size um, diameter, it's going to be the most flavorful. They'll continue just to grow and grow and grow and get bigger and bigger, but they'll start to get a little stringier or a little woodier and they'll just lose some of the flavor if you let some of those crops go too long. So when some of those crops are really coming in, you'll probably want to check on them every other day um, just so you can be harvesting them and really getting them when they're at their best. So for something like our peas here, we'll, we'll show you how to harvest those. And the same, same rule is going to apply for beans. Um, it's actually easiest to make sure that you're holding the plant either with one hand or you can hold it and then snap it off with the other part of your hand. But you don't want to just yank down on the plant or you have the potential of actually hurting your plant and causing the, the, um, the vines to snap a little bit. So you want to provide some support as you're going to clip it. And the same thing goes when we're harvesting out like your tomatoes or your peppers. So typically in that case, we'll actually just use a little pair of clippers and that way we can just slice off or snip off um, where the plant is connecting to that fruiting vegetable. Um, that way you can get a really clean cut. You're not at risk of damaging the plant because anytime you are you know, snipping it or you're taking part of it off, you know, you're exposing it then to the elements. And so you wanna make sure you have a nice, clean, short, quick cut and you're not you know, pulling along the whole stem or something as you're trying to disconnect the fruit or the vegetable from the plant itself. Um, so once you've actually harvested what you're going to need for that particular day, that meal, whatever it might be, um, then you'll wanna make sure you get it inside as quickly as possible. Because if you're harvesting everything, let's say you're putting it into your tote and then you leave it out in the sun for a couple hours, then the quality of that um, just degrades rapidly. So you'll wanna get it inside to shade as quickly as possible. Um, and then do whatever rinsing or kind of treatments that you're going to do. We'll talk about that in our next video to make sure that then you're really keeping it at that peak flavor so you can really enjoy that in all of your upcoming meals. So hope that provided a couple of little um, tips and tricks as you're getting ready to harvest. Again, I highly recommend doing that walkthrough once a week so you know what to expect. You can start kind of getting those wheels turning and looking for recipe inspiration as you think about how you'll be using it in your meals. And then you just have a sense of how often you'll need to go out to the garden to start harvesting some of those vegetables and the fruits as they're coming on.